it's been a while i made an analog mixer video i got one here and here's everything you need to know to operate this board in six minutes rapid fire style let's check it out almost all missing consoles are divided into four sessions we have the input sessions the processing session the routing session and then we have the output or the master sessions the input session can be divided into various categories depending on one the type of connector you have so we have xlr connectors and jack connectors including roca connectors here can also be uh, categorized based on the signal level coming into the mixer we have mic level and line level signal which are not the same we have um depending on whether the input coming is a balanced or unbalanced signal whether it's mono or stereo and whether it's a high impedance or a low impedance signal i won't go into all of that uh, i have a separate video where i'll be explaining mixer inputs which you'll find in the description when the video is out but for the simplicity of this video if you have microphones you connect them to the mic inputs vocal and drum microphones electronic instruments like keyboards and music playback devices you connect to the line inputs um, there are certain inputs that have pickups, instruments that have pickups like a bass guitar and acoustic guitar. You can you don't connect them directly because they are high impedance signals and the mixer is configured to receive low impedance. So you use a DI box for that before you connect them into the mixing console. And each input is assigned to a channel. For analog mixers, this has already been assigned. So um, mic one, this is input for uh, a mic input for channel one and this for channel two all the way to whatever channel the mixer has. For digital mixers, you have to most times assign um, because you have stage boxes and local inputs uh, at the back of the mixer. So you have to assign which of those connectors um, goes to whichever input. And finally on input, we have the gain knob. The gain simply is used to match the signal level coming to the mixer to the nominal or operating level of the mixer. And this also ensures that um, all the signal level coming in, they come in different uh, voltage levels, but this gain knob is used to make sure that they are all similar or identical to one another in terms of signal level, making it easy for you to mix the entire uh, input coming to the mixer. I have an entire video dedicated to how to set gain on the mixing console. You'll find it in the description. Moving on, we have the processing section. For this mixer and for most analog mixer, you have just a low cut or a high pass filter and then the EQ session, making up the processing section of the mixer. More advanced consoles or digital mixers, you have dynamic processing, such as compressors and gates. Uh, you even have plugins for some. Um, you have DSRs, um, multiband compressors, and dynamic EQs. But we have just a, a filter here, which takes out low ends for instruments that don't need it. And then a parametric EQ. I have a video dedicated on how you use EQ, also linked in the description. From the processing session, we have the routing session. From here down is a quality routing session. The routing session basically is just to send the signals in the channels to various destinations. As we have multiple inputs, so we have multiple outputs as well. The two main outputs we have are the main outputs and the auxiliary outputs. Auxiliary are like secondary outputs and you create different mixes for them. So for this console and for most console, you have a bus assign switch is here. This is a bus assign switch for you to assign this channel to uh, the main left and right, which is your main input. Uh, this is a bus assign switch to assign this channel to sub three and four, which is like a group output. And then this is for group or sub one and two. And then you use this fader to control the volume of the input sent to these buses, which you have assigned here. So if you're mixing, for example, and you want to assign this channel to the main output or your main speakers, you, you uh, press the main LRO and then this is your volume control. Uh, the pan knob here is used to send the signal to either left or the right of the main output. Uh, auxiliary outputs are used to send the signal to secondary output. So if you're mixing live, for example, and then you've used this and the feather to send the signal to the main output, you use auxiliary one, for example, to send the signal to stage monitor. So you are creating a separate mix by sending the, use this to control the volume of the signals going to the uh, stage monitor. There's a switch here which um, assigns auxiliary one and two to either pre or post feeder. Pre feeder simply means um, the volume sent to the auxiliary is independent of the channel fader. So if the fader is down and this is pre fader, um, the signal here is not affected, which is what you want when you're sending signals to stage monitors. But post fader, for example, which are these two, I used to send signals, for example, to external effects units or if the mixer has an internal effects unit you use uh, one of these knobs that is used to send that is assigned for that to send the signal to the internal effects unit i won't go into that now as well i have a separate video on that which i'll link in the description finally we have the output session 
this will have the master control for all of your output. This is the master control for our main output. These are master controls for our group or sub outputs. And these are the master controls for our auxiliary output. So to recap, signal comes from the input straight to the channel, you use the gain knob to match the signal level to the nominal or the operating level of the mixer. And then you have our processing session where you shape the tonality and the quality of the sound. And it goes to the routing session. So you send to different destination, to the main output, to the group output, using the fader to vary the level to these outputs and also to the auxiliary output. And here you set the uh, master level for each of these outputs. Now let's do a quick demo. I have the Show SM58 dynamic microphone here, which I'll be plugging to channel four. And uh, I'll quickly set gain because I've done this before. I know around three o'clock position is a good gain setting for this microphone in this mixing console. What I want to do is to assign this mic to the main left and right. I have my main left and right uh, fader turned up. I'll hit the boss assign switch for channel four and then send this up to about zero dB. So check one, two, as you can see, I have signal here in my main output. I just switched to the output of this mixing console and this is what the mic sounds like. If you found value in this video, give this video a thumbs up and ensure to check out the description for the other videos. Thank you very much for sticking around till the end. I'm Kelvin, I'll see you in the next one.